Right, here we're going to look at a back titration. So we do a back titration rather than a normal titration when we've got a substance which may be insoluble, um, the end point might be unclear or it might react with the titrant too slowly. So we'll talk through this. So I've got a substance here, it's a mixture of calcium carbonate and calcium chloride. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to react the calcium carbonate in there with an acid. So hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid will not react with the calcium chloride. So the reason I'm doing this is I want to work out how much calcium chloride is actually in here in terms of the ratio between the calcium carbonate and the calcium chloride. So to start off with, very similar to making up a standard solution. I'm going to weigh out it's about one and a half grams there. Now that one and a half grams just tip straight into a conical flask. And you can reweigh the boat just so you know how much of the actual solid you've added. Now the key factor in a back titration, when I'm adding this hydrochloric acid, the acid must be in excess. Calcium carbonate is a base. If I react that with the sodium hydroxide, well they won't, it's base base effectively. So I need to fully neutralize the calcium carbonate with the hydrochloric acid. So what I'm going to do, that 1.5 grams which I've added, some of it is not going to react. But I'm going to assume all of it will. Because then I know that the amount of acid what I add will definitely be in excess. So... I can't remember the exact numbers, I'll probably tag on doing the calculations on the board after this video, but I know I need around 50 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid to fully neutralise everything in there. So I've got my hydrochloric acid in here. First thing to do would be to clean the pipette with the hydrochloric acid. So suck a bit of it up, you don't need to fill it all the way up. And just make sure, obviously everything in there is cleaned. Pour out into waste. And now I'm going to transfer 50 into here. Right, as it's a bit slow and boring, all I'm going to do is that. So we're going to assume that's 50 cubic centimetres. Obviously you would not do that, you would record it properly, make sure you've fully added the correct amount, but it just saves you watching that twice. I know I'm going to be in excess when... There's no more fizzing effectively. The carbonate releases carbon dioxide, so if there's no more of that going off, then yeah, I'm definitely in excess there. Right, so now you would have your burette. You would fill that up with some sodium hydroxide, any base that can react with the hydrochloric acid. As always, a bit of sodium hydroxide in. Clean the burette out. Make sure our tap is closed.
and fill up. So record where you start, bottom of the meniscus, two decimal places, last digit should be a zero or a five. So I've got my reacted solution in there. So there is going to be some excess hydrochloric acid in here. Now this excess hydrochloric acid I'm going to neutralize with the sodium hydroxide. So I know I added 50 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid in there originally. And I know the concentration from the bottle. So I would be able to work out how many moles of hydrochloric acid I added initially. What the sodium hydroxide is going to tell me is how many moles of hydrochloric acid remain. So if I know what I started with and I know what's left at the end, then what's disappeared or reacted, ha I don't know why I did that. Um, so what's reacted has reacted with the calcium carbonate that was in this mixture. So standard titration procedures, add a bit of indicator. So two drops roughly, cut this because it's phenolphthalein, acidic, acidic conditions. I would now add the sodium hydroxide in there until I got the pink solution at the bottom. Again, you can use a white tile underneath to help you see that pink as it appears. And as with other titrations, if you pour the sodium hydroxide onto the side of the flask, then make sure you squirt some water so that it fully goes down and reacts in there. So you would simply add till you see the pink colour, stop, that would be your rough titration, and then remember, repeat the titrations until you end up with concordant results. So about 0.1 cubic centimetres of each other. And that would be it. From there, the main point is just doing the calculations. So I'll do those on the board in a bit. Right, so looking at the back titration calculations, as I said, the most important thing in this is that you need an excess amount of acid to actually neutralize the base, what it's gonna be reacting with. So we had 1.5 grams of a calcium carbonate and calcium chloride mixture. So as I said, calcium chloride isn't going to react with the hydrochloric acid. So to make sure we're in excess, we're gonna assume it's all calcium carbonate. So, Number of moles of the calcium carbonate, which do mass over MR, gives us this. Doing a balanced equation, we can see that we need twice as many moles of hydrochloric acid to react with it. So if I've got that many moles of calcium chloride, sorry, calcium carbonate in my 1.5 grams, then doubling that tells me the number of moles of hydrochloric acid what I need. Now if I need that many moles, obviously the moles divided by the concentration, so it was a one molar concentration of hydrochloric acid. I've just converted the dm cubed into cm cubed here. I need to put in at least, well, 30 cubic centimeters basically of hydrochloric acid. So I put in about 50 cubic centimeters. That ensures we are well into excess. But even if you'd put in 35, something like that, you would be fine. So, next step, obviously looking at working out how much of the acid was left afterwards. Right, carrying on where I was up to. Um, we had the calcium carbonate, calcium chloride mixture there. We knew we had 1.5 grams. We worked out that we needed to add 29.97 cubic centimeters, so pretty much 30 cubic centimeters. So I'm gonna say that I chucked in 50 cubic centimeters of um, one molar hydrochloric acid. So then it's definitely in excess. Right, so from that I can work out how many moles initially I started with. Moles equals concentration times volume and work that out. Now from there obviously you've got the acid. Some of it will have reacted with that stuff and you're going to have some left over. 
So you can see if we need it at least that, then we're going to have about 20 cubic centimetres of that one molar left over, at least. Probably a bit more. So you'll do the titration, you'll have the remaining acid in the conical flask and you'll add the sodium hydroxide into that. Now I'm going to make up a titra value and say it took around 30 cubic centimetres of one molar sodium hydroxide to neutralise what was remaining. Right, so with that I can work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide what it took. Right, so my number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Now I know sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is a one to one ratio. You can write the balanced equation for that if you wish. So if I know I've got this many moles of sodium hydroxide that I added from the burette, then there must have been that amount of moles of hydrochloric acid sitting in there after it had reacted with the calcium carbonate. Right, so what I can do now is actually work out how much hydrochloric acid reacted because I can work out the number of moles what I started with. Essentially it's just going to be that, the 50 over 1000 times 1 there. And this is the moles remaining. So what you would do what you've started with, what you've finished with, lets you know what's actually reacted. So what's reacted in this case is that. Now I can use the moles of acid that have reacted to let me know how many moles of calcium carbonate was sitting in there. So our moles of HCl reacted, we worked out that 50 over 1000 minus the 30 over 1000 leaves us with a 0.02 moles of HCl reacted. So write a balanced equation. So we can see it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So I need two hydrochloric acid moles for every one calcium carbonate moles. So if I used up 0.02 moles of that, then I must have only used up half the amount of moles of this. So what that means, in that 1.5 grams what I weighed out, 0.01 moles of it was calcium carbonate. So I can work out what mass of that 1.5 grams was actually calcium carbonate. So easiest way to do that, moles equals mass over MR, rearrange that, so mass equals moles times MR. Um, so pretty much just one gram there. So from that 1.55 grams, so one over 1.5. So the other 0.5 grams must have been the calcium chloride. So 67% of that powder was the calcium carbonate. So there's a back titration. 
Key things, acid must be in excess, so work out how much acid you need to actually put in. So assume all of the powder is active essentially, it's all going to react, even though some of it might not. So make sure you chuck in loads of acid. From there, you know the amount, the initial amount of acid what you've put in. Neutralize what's left over. So the start minus the leftover tells you what is reacted in the middle with this. Balanced equation there, we can see this is what's reacted. Two to one ratio lets me know how much of this is reacted. Once you know the moles, moles times MR gives you the mass of it. And that's a back titration. Thank you.